Okay, number 64, what is y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 2 written in standard form using only integers? Well, let's rewrite the problem down here so we have a little bit more space. y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 2. Now remember, standard form has both x and y on that left side of our equation. So the first thing we need to do is move this 3 over 4 x to the other side. So let's add 3 over 4 x to both sides. The reason we're adding is so that these will cancel because one's positive and one's negative. Okay. From here we're going to get 3 over 4 x plus y equals 2. Now remember whenever we're um, trying to write something using only integers we want to multiply by the number that's in the denominator. And the only number that's in the denominator is 4. Okay. Let's multiply everything by 4. So we're going to multiply this whole left side by 4, and we're going to multiply this whole right side by 4. So let's do 4 times 3 over 4x is just going to be 3 over 3x. Sorry. This gets distributed. It also gets distributed to the y. So it's plus 4y equals 2 times 4 is just 8. And let's see if that's an answer choice. It absolutely is. It is answer choice C. Number 65, which of the following is an equation of a horizontal line? Now, remember, horizontal lines are the ones where y equals a number. Why are they a horizontal line? Well, let's think about it. If y, our y-axis, was only equal to a fixed number, so no matter what x was, y was always going to be something, right? That would be a horizontal line, okay? Now, it's confusing because normally when we think of y, we think of vertical, right? We think we're moving up and down. We're not moving horizontally. But when you're talking about y equals a number, that means that y is fixed. So the only one that only has y in it would be h. So our first answer was c, and our second answer was h. Okay, this is chapter 5, lesson 5.6, parallel and perpendicular lines. Go ahead and put your name and let's get started. Okay, so our objectives here are to determine whether lines are parallel or perpendicular, or neither, and to write equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. And there's something really, really easy about all of this. All you guys really need to know are that parallel lines... Those are lines that are going in the same direction. They will never intersect each other. See how these lines are basically the same line just shifted upwards? They're never going to intersect because these lines go on forever. And that's what makes them parallel. And what's so unique about parallel lines is they have the same slope. Always. Okay? So these two lines have the same slope. Now, perpendicular lines are what look like this. And what's unique about perpendicular lines is that they create a 90 degree angle at their intersection point. So that little um, box thing represents 90 degrees, okay? And what's interesting about those is that they have slopes are opposite reciprocals. And you don't need to know that right now, but we will get into that in a second, okay? All right, so two distinct lines in a coordinate plane either intersect or are parallel. Parallel lines are lines in the same plane that never intersect. We just talked about that. It's because they're going in the same direction. Essential understanding, you can determine the relationship between two lines by comparing their slopes and y-intercepts. So the slopes of parallel lines. So non-vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. Vertical lines are parallel if they have different x-intercepts, okay? Same thing for horizontal lines. So horizontal lines are also parallel as long as they have different y-intercepts. An example, the graphs of y equals 1 half x plus 1 and y equals 1 half x minus 2 are lines that have the same slope, which is 1 half, and different y-intercepts. These lines are parallel, okay? We're going to do some examples too. So line passes through 12, 5 and is parallel to the graph of y equals 
2 over 3x minus 1. What equation represents the line in slope-intercept form? Well, let's use what's given to us. So we know that the point is 12, 5, so that's a point on our graph. We also know that it's parallel to this equation. Now, the slope of this equation, our m equals 2 over 3, and our point here is 0, comma, negative 1. How did we know that? Well, 2 over 3 is what's next to x, and this negative 1 represents our b, or our y-intercept, right? Because this is in slope-intercept form. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to write an equation of the, the new line that's going to be parallel to this one, okay? So let's go ahead and write y equals mx plus b. Now remember, parallel means that it's going to have the same slope. So that means we're going to take this m and we're just going to use it again. So we're going to use it down here. So we now have y equals 2 over 3x plus b. Okay. Now in order to solve for b, because we're going to have a different y-intercept than this one, right? Because if we had the same y-intercept, we would just have the same line. So for our b to be different, okay, we need to plug in this point, all right? And we know that at this point, x equals 12 and y equals 5, okay? So we're just going to plug those two values in down here, and then we're going to solve for b. So y equals 5, let's plug that in. So 5 equals 2 over 3 times... Now our x is 12 plus b, okay? From here, the th we're going to multiply through, so we're going to get 5 equals 2 times 12 is 24, so we're going to have 24 over 3 plus b. 24 divided by 3 is just 8, so we have 5 equals 8 plus b. All we have to do is subtract 8 from both sides, minus 8, minus 8. We get negative 3 equals b. All right, guys, our last step is to just plug that back into our original and then rewrite the equation. So our final equation is y equals 2 over 3x minus 3. Beautiful. Okay? And always, always, always remember, if it's parallel, you should always maintain the same slope. Did we maintain our same slope? Yes, our slope stayed at 2 over 3 for both of these equations. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so a line passes through negative 3, negative 1, and is parallel to the graph y equals 2x plus 3. What equation represents the line in slope-intercept form? Well, here's our point, passes through this point, and is parallel to this equation, or this graph. So we know we're going to use this 2 again. Okay, so let's write y equals mx plus b. Substitute in that m, which we know, so y equals 2x plus b, because we know that our lines are going to be parallel, so the same slope. And then let's just plug in the two points, there are the point that it gave us. So x equals negative 3, y equals negative 1. Let's plug that in, and we can solve for b, and then have a, our final equation. So y is going to be negative 1 equals 2 times negative 3 plus b. So now we've got negative 1 equals 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus b. All we have to do is add 6 to both sides, plus 6 plus 6, and we're going to get 5 equals b. So guys, our final equation at the end of the day is y equals 2x plus 5. Okay? The more of these you'll, you do, the better you will get at them. So if you're not getting it right now, make sure that you're doing the practice in the homework. All right. You can also use slope to determine whether two lines are perpendicular. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. We talked about that earlier. And what's peculiar about perpendicular lines is if the product of their slopes is negative 1, a vertical line has a horizontal line a vertical line and a horizontal line are also perpendicular. So the graph of y equals 2, 1, 1 half x minus 1 has a slope of 1 half. The graph of y equals negative 2x plus 1 has a slope of negative 2. If we multiply their two slopes together, the lines are perpendicular. 
and that's what we call opposite reciprocals. So you basically make one of them negative and flip the fraction. So 1 over 2, if we made it negative, would become negative 1 over 2. And then if we flipped it, it would be negative 2 over 1, which is the same as negative 2. Okay? And that's how you get from one or from one to the other. And whenever you multiply them together, you're going to get negative 1 two opposite reciprocals, okay? We'll do some more practice involving those, but for now, that's what you guys need to know. Okay, so are the graphs y equal, or 4y equals negative 5x plus 12, and y equals 4 over 5x minus 8, parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, we want to put them both in the same form, which, um, again, we should try to use slope-intercept form. This one is already in slope-intercept form, so let's just go ahead and change this one into slope-intercept form, okay? In order to get 4y equals negative 5x plus 12 into slope-intercept form, we're going to have to isolate that y. So let's go ahead and divide by 4 to both sides. And when we do this, we're going to get y equals negative 5 over 4x plus and then 12 divided by 4 is just 3. So we've got negative 5 over 4x plus 3. Now, check it out. Our slope here is this number, negative 5 over 4. Is that the opposite reciprocal of 4 over 5? Well, remember, we can always check. If we multiply them together, they should give us negative 1. What's negative 5 over 4 times 4 over 5? We multiply these together, the 4s cancel, the 5s cancel. All we're left with is a negative 1. Very good. Okay. Now, another way to check is just if we took negative 5 over 4, we took or we made it negative, or in other words, we stuck another negative on there, it would become positive 5 over 4. And then if we flipped it, it would be 4 over 5. Is that the slope of our other line? Absolutely. And as long as, oh yeah, no, that's absolutely it. So they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So these two equations must be perpendicular. The graphs must be perpendicular, okay? And it's due to opposite reciprocal slopes it asks us to explain in this question. All right. Are the graphs of the equations parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, let's check it out. y equals 3 over 4x plus 7. That's already in slope-intercept form. So all we need to do is handle this bad boy and we're done. Okay. All right. So first off, always, 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 we need to isolate y. So 4x minus 3y equals 9. And when I say always, I mean when we're trying to convert to slope-intercept form. In order to, let's take those that x variable out of there. So let's minus 4x from both sides, minus 4x. We've got negative 3y equals negative 4x plus 9. Okay, all I did was subtract 4x from both sides. And lastly, we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. So what we're going to get is y equals negative 4x over negative 3 is just positive 4 over 3x. And then 9 divided by negative 3 is just going to be minus 3. Okay? Now, I see that 3 over 4 is the reciprocal of 4 over 3, but it's not opposite reciprocal. Okay? So these aren't parallel because their slopes are not the same. Check out 3 over 4 versus 4 over 3. They're not the same, and they're also not opposite reciprocal. So this one would be neither. They are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Okay, next one, we've got 6y equals negative x plus 6, and y equals negative 1, 6x plus 6. Well, what we need to do, obviously, is divide by 6 from both sides. To this left one so we can get it into slope intercept form so once we divide by 6 we get y equals negative 1 over 6x plus 1 let's take a look at the slopes the slope of this one is negative 1 over 6 the slope of this one is negative 1 over 6 what, could, what do we know about the slopes the slopes 
are the same. So these are parallel. And we're done. Okay. Writing an equation of a perpendicular line. Which equation represents the line that passes through 2, 4, and is perpendicular to the graph y equals 1 third x plus 1? Well, first off, we can eliminate some of our answers just by figuring out which of them is perpendicular to 1 over 3. Okay? So if 1 over 3 is our slope of our original line, then the slope of the line that's perpendicular must be, let's take 1 over 3, let's make it negative. So we've got negative 1 over 3, and now let's flip it. So instead of three, 1 over 3, it becomes negative 3 over 1. And now we've got, this is also equal to just negative 3. So we know our slope must be negative 3. Looking at these responses, A, the slope is not negative 3. B, the slope is not negative 3. So we can only have C or D. Now, in order to find out if they pass through the point 2, 4, all we have to do is plug this point in to these equations, okay? All we have to do is plug this point in to the equation, these equations. Or you could have done what we did on the previous examples, which was where we took y equals negative 3x plus b, right? And we substituted in 2 and 4, and we figured out what our equation should be. So I'll do it both ways. So let's take this 2 over 4 and let's substitute it in. So x equals 2 and y equals 4, okay? So let's put those in and let's solve for b. So if x equals 2, y equals 4, we now get 4 equals negative 3 times 2 plus b. This becomes 4 equals negative 6 plus b. We just add 6 to both sides. We get 10 equals b. So our answer is going to be y equals negative 3x plus 10, which is d. Now let me show you the other way you could have done it, okay? The other way was once you figured out, okay, c and d, we know are our answers. Let's just take x equals 2 and y equals 4 and plug them into our possible answer choices, okay? And we'll see if those work. So let's try C. So let's take x equals 2 and y equals 4 and plug it into C and see if we get the right answer. So we're going to get y equals negative 3x minus 2. Plug in x equals 2, y equals 4. So 4 equals negative 3 times 2 minus 2. This is going to be 4 equals negative 6 minus 2. Negative 6 minus 2 is not 4, guys. 4 equals negative 8. Is that true? No. So we know that C is not our answer. And that D would have to be. Okay, so whenever it gives you multiple choice, guys, use that to your advantage. If you're really confused about solving for B, then just plug in the point that it gave you and see if it matches up with any of your answer choices. Okay. Solving a real world problem. So an architect uses software to design the ceiling of a room. The, ar the architect needs to enter an equation that represents a new beam. The new beam will be perpendicular to the existing beam, which is represented by the red line. The new beam will pass through the corner uh, represented by the blue point. What is an equation that represents the new beam? Well, this question really is not any different than the questions that we were doing before. So first off, let's figure out, okay, what's the point of this blue dot? Well, I see it's 12 units in the x direction. So our x component is 12, and it's 10 units up. So it's 12 comma 10. That's our point, our blue point. So we know that it has to pass through that blue point, and it has to be perpendicular to the red line. So let's just eyeball it and draw a line that's perpendicular. So we know it must look something like this. Now, if we were to find the slope of this red line, then we could find the slope of the line that we want. And I accidentally made them both red. So let me make this one blue. There we go. Should be a blue line, okay? All right, so if we find the slope of the red line, we can 
always find the slope of the blue line then because we know that they're perpendicular. They form a 90 degree angle when where they intersect. Okay, so in order to find the slope of the red line, let's take two of the points. One of the points is at 0, 8, and the other point is at 12, 0. Okay, so let's make 0, 8 our x1, y1, and let's make 12, 0 our x2, y2. Remember, slope is x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our slope is at y2 minus y1, which is 0 minus 8, over x2 minus x1, which is 12 minus 0. So our slope equals negative 8 over 12, which in this case is... Um, we can divide by 4 to both the top and the bottom, so negative 2 over 3. So that's the slope of our red line. Now, the slope of the blue line, we're going to have to find the opposite reciprocal of this. And the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 over 3 oops, is you change it to be negative, or in this case to be positive, since it's already negative, so it's going to be 2 over 3, and you're just going to flip the fraction, so it's going to be 3 over 2. That's our slope. We already know the point is 12, 10, so let's take that and let's plug it in. So we've got y equals mx plus b. We know our slope is 3 over 2, so y equals 3 over 2x plus b, and let's just plug in our point, 12, 10. So x equals 12, y equals 10. We plug those in, we get 10 equals 3 over 2 times 12 plus b. This 12 is going to cancel with the 2, and we're going to get 6. 6 times 3 is just 18, so we get 10 equals 18 plus b. We can subtract 18 from both sides. We're going to get negative 8 equals b. Booyah. Okay, so our equation, finally, 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 is going to be y equals 3 over 2x minus 8. All we did was we took this b and we plugged it back into our original, and then we found our answer. All right, guys, that's all I had for today. Um, good luck on the homework, and see you guys tomorrow.